Hello my friends, how are you doing? Today I will share with you my five best secrets on how I create LUTs. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer and I want to thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. So as you can imagine, this video is going to be full of secret sauce again, so watch it till the end. Let's get started. And the first secret you can see right here, when I create LUTs, I mix different pictures together on one canvas that have similar characteristics. So for example, in this case, they are all portraits, they have all kind of the similar color values, so we have skin tone, we have these brown tones, some gray values, a little bit of blue values in there. So I know that when I create a lot, it's not just going to work for one specific picture. It's going to work for more pictures of a similar characteristic. So I can get rather specific with that. And you can imagine that if I create a lot for this cause here, for this kind of look, it wouldn't necessarily work for a sunset picture or for a nature picture or for a night Night shots or stuff like that. And this is really good to keep that into consideration. Another part of that, of mix mixing and matching these pictures, is that you can decide on a technical level what kind of camera, what kind of file type. For example, let's say you have a, an icon camera, it's a raw file, the color is set to flat. So you can create a lot with these specific settings in there, for example, for portrait pictures, and then the next time you make a photo with these settings and you apply the LUT, you instantly have that kind of look and this can save you a lot of time and you also get a more consistency because you always get the same look or at least the same starting point and then you can tweak it so it looks better. This is the first secret. Now here comes the second secret and that is you might want to use some charts when you create LUTs. For example, this one. Here we have all the colors in there and here's another one where we also have gray values in here and we have also muted colors in here and this can be super powerful. For example, when I turn on a lens filter adjustment like this, you can see how specifically the colors, the brightnesses, the values are changing and when I now go in here and I change for example the blend mode, you can see specifically what kind of impact this is going to have. Uh, for example here, what kind of colors are turning completely black in this case or uh, with if we go over here for example you can see with lighter colors that suddenly there are some colors that develop similar characteristics and another important thing is if you have this chart here you can also see for example where this is going to bite into gradients. So for example if we go like this vivid light you can see here that this is all white now, this is all black now, and we have these sharp lines here where before we had smooth gradients. And this is especially important if you create LUTs for pictures who have a lot of bokeh in the background because bokeh often means a soft gradient and you don't want to have these sharp edges and ugly gradients and color banding in there. So this is important to look out for that and this is if you connect it to my first secret, also a good trick where you could say, I will match pictures that have a lot of bokeh and for example, that have very colorful bokeh like night shots or that have kind of desaturated uh, like matte pastel bokehs like here in these pictures that don't have too much color in them. You can create specific LUTs for that. So that's kind of important and connected to this, I want to guide your attention to two online articles you should really read. Really good stuff here. This one is evaluating LUTs with a stress test. This is also where I got these really cool color charts here. This one is by Jason Bodak. I will link this in the video description. This also links to this page which is called 3dlutcreator.com and here you can download these charts even with a little explanation of what they are, what their purpose is, and you can even download some technical 3D LUTs. So really great starting point to get into that and get a bit more specific. And there's another one that's really cool. This is actually by Affinity Photo itself, James Ritson. You might know him also from his YouTube videos on the official Affinity channel. He explains the difference between 1D and 3D LUTs. 
In most cases, you would use a 3D LUT, but a 1D LUT can be very powerful and specific and have really amazing applications. So read through that. And this also gives you a lot better understanding about what LUTs are, how they work, and also the different LUT types that are out there from the file format. All right, let's go back to Affinity Photo. And here comes my next trick my next secret I want to share with you so for example you see me often doing in my live streams this kind of trick where I create a rectangle and fill it with a certain color any kind of color and put it over the picture and then just use a blend mode for that like so you can see this gives a certain look you can use different blend modes stuff like that and the thing is now as I said in my last video this does not export into a lot because this is not an adjustment. So if I go here to file and export, you can see from the little cat photo here has zero effect on the lot. This does simply not work. All right. So what are we going to do instead? And you have to find a little bit of workarounds. In this case, it's kind of easy because you can simply use the lens filter. This also might give you better results for that. And you can see now, again, I can choose my color I can choose also how strong the effect is there. I can choose the blend mode on the picture. So a lot of adjustments that I can do here. And now let's let it like, it's not a good look just to see the effect on the LUT. If I go to file and export LUT, you can see now this actually applies to my LUT. So I can use that. So think about that. Keep that in mind when you create LUTs. It's really important. And sometimes you need to have these kind of workarounds to make a LUT work for you. All right. Here is the next trick. And this is really, really good, especially when you use LUTs from the internet. There is free ones. There is bought ones. I have some packs with LUTs. Personally, I found more often than not that the paid LUTs are better quality than the free LUTs. Um, but that's up for choice. The one thing I want to point out here is that you can actually load a LUT. This is, for example, one of mine here. This is called Polar Floyd Portrait LUT. And you can use this and then adjust that because this is an adjustment layer. So if I, let's make this a lot more extreme, like so. And maybe I will duplicate this so it's getting even more extreme. Um, doesn't look good. Just to show you, when I now go to file and export LUT, this applies to my LUT. And to know this is really amazing and really important because what this does for you is that now if you buy LUTs, you can load them into Affinity Photo. You can make your own specific adjustments. You can bring in your taste, your artistic vision, your twist, and then export this with the adjustments applied to that LUT as your own LUT version. This is really, really important and makes it so much more powerful to get LUTs from other people, be inspired by them, see what they do, and then adjust them to your own needs to your own camera type, all these kind of amazing things. And another thing that connects to this is, of course, you can mix and match LUTs together. So for example, here I have a second of my LUTs. This one is called Analog Film 1. And you can see now if I turn this on and off or if I turn the other one on and off, both are loaded on top of each other. So if I have different LUTs that I both like and maybe they work together well, I can load both of them and even do my own adjustments on top of that and then export that as my own LUT, as my own creation uh, that I can use for my pictures. Now, this should not be an invite to just download LUTs from the internet, save them as your own LUT and then uh, sell them uh, because it's now your own LUT. This is not what I mean by that. What I mean is to adjust them to your own needs so you have your own look and artistic style in them and they work for the kind of photos that you are taking because the photographer that makes the LUTs, the artist who makes the LUTs, of course, makes a different kind of photo and uses different equipment that you do. All right. So this is basically it. One last thing I want to share with you this is also a really good secret. If you work with other software, for example, video software like DaVinci Resolve or live streaming software like OBS, what you can do is that you make a still 
of your video so just one frame from that video or a screen cap of your live streaming and then you can import that into affinity photo make all the adjustments you want here export that as a lot import it in your video or live streaming software and have that look in there this is really amazing because for example with live streaming software often you don't have these many and very precise adjustments that you find in affinity photo so this can be amazingly powerful all right that's everything for today let me know what you think maybe also join my facebook group with over 1900 amazing other artists in there and have a good day see you soon bye